The latest book by Barbara Boswell looks at the fundamental power of stories to shape and transform lives. It examines the novels of black South, Africa, black South African women writers during and after apartheid. Nastasia Aronsa spoke to the author about the literary works of the writers. I selected these writers because these were writers that I was interested in studying. Um, they had made a significant contribution to the South African literary canon, but as black women, their work was not really written about or seen anywhere within um, traditional structures of um, books published on South African literature. And so what I wanted to do was make this history of black women's literary production visible to people who did not know about the black women writing or what they were writing about or their contributions to South African letters. On that note, perhaps you can school us a little bit in terms of the effect the, you know, apartheid uh, doctrines and uh, policy had, especially in the lives of black women when it comes to, um, you know, affecting them politically and when it comes to the production of writing. Right, so the laws that structured apartheid, they were like a web that interweaved in order to suppress and oppress black people in general, but black women specifically, especially when it came to literary production. So one of the acts that I examine in the book is the Bantu Education Act, which really um, designated a certain level of education for Africans where they would not be educated beyond um, being fit for physical labor. And so they were minimized in this way because they were not seen as capable or that they should not have aspirations to be intellectuals or writers or thinkers. And so this act really puts people in a hole where they couldn't um, imagine themselves as artistic producers or writers. And despite this, the black women that I look at in the book, like Miriam Tladi, for example, and Loretta Nobo, um, they wrote, they were educated perhaps a little bit before Bantu Education Act became law in 1953. Um, and so this was one of the structures. The other was the Suppression of Communism Act. So any book that was written or any pamphlet or any essay that was critical of the South African government, the apartheid state, um, could then be labeled as communist or supportive of communism. And in this way, these books were banned and the authors could be arrested, um, put in jail and were often harassed. We see that with many of the authors that I cover in this book. When it comes to chapter three, which is titled Dissenting Daughters, it focuses on South African women of Indian descent. When it comes to their literary, uh, you know, publications, why does it appear almost absent when we you sort of look back at uh, history, so to speak? Well, I think, um, again, in the 80s, when these women started gaining prominence, um, we were still under apartheid law. And a lot of the work that they wrote, like Farida Karodia, for example, her book, Daughters of the Twilight, really highlights the evil nature of the Population Registration Act and what happens to people and their lives, how their lives are torn apart by apartheid. Her parents, the character, are Indian. They lose their shop, they are arrested, they are harassed. Um, so these kinds of books were deemed... Um, unsuitable and they were suppressed, their publication, their circulation, they were banned. And so um, we see only after the 90s people starting to write, I mean the books themselves couldn't even circulate, so why would people know about them and why would other people write about them? Why would critics like myself um, write about these books when the books themselves were banned? And so um, we see only um, after 1990, after the end of formal apartheid, people starting to pay critical attention to the works of Indian writers, South African Indian women writers, um, because the, 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 the works really expressed the violence of apartheid and how severely it curtailed and structured the lives of Indian women. How has, uh, you know, black woman writing uh, evolved in post-apartheid South Africa? What's your assessment of it? It has flourished. It is one of the most exciting and pro prolific areas of literary production at the moment. We see, especially in poetry, 
um, a, an explosion of poetic um, expression and wonderful poetry by poets like Koleka Putsuma. We see writers, um, for example, like Zukiswa, Wanner, and um, Angela Makova, who are being producing novel after novel after novel. Um, because the constraints are no longer there, people are free ideologically. There are no longer laws where they are being harassed and persecuted for writing about the South African reality. Um, and so people, women especially, are open to writing about all manner of things. Um, we see Sindiwe Magona, for example, writing beautiful novels about HIV AIDS, um, gender-based violence. We see a writer like Rada Jacobs writing about gambling. So from the profoundly political to the mundane, women, black women, have seized this opportunity to write and are inserting a very powerful voice um, into South African discourse and South African fiction. You talk of a, a new genre in black South African women's writing, and it's the neo-slave narrative. What do you want people to understand about it? Perhaps you can unpack it a little bit for us. The neo-slave narrative is a concept that I borrowed from the United States, where people in the contemporary moment, um, black people specifically, and in this case, black South African women, are writing about pasts that predate apartheid. They write about slavery. And two of the books that I look at um, are The Slave Book by Rada Jacobs and Unconfessed by Yvette Christiansa. And these are black women writers, broadly defined, of course, who are imagining and rendering the slave experience in fiction. And they fill in the gaps in history because for the enslaved, the, no history exists. They exist in the archive only as records of white slave owners' property. Um, and so what these writers do, the neo-slave narrative, neo meaning new, they're creating from imagination, from their own imaginative worlds, um, texts, fiction about slavery. And what they do is produce for us um, a kind of a universal, not universal truth, but a, the... the, the emotional quality of what it was like or what it must have been like to be an enslaved person and an enslaved woman where rape was part of the political economy of slavery. Um, most women slaves were raped. Um, that is just one of the facts of how slavery reproduced itself. And so these women who write neo-slave narratives open up for us a window on history which has been closed to us by official accounts of history.